Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting often rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something I'm going to apologize for. What, Jason? What are you ap ap apologizing for? I've known about this whiskey for almost five years now. I've been doing YouTube videos for over six years. Um, in, Eng in German I have 3,000 plus videos out there. Um, I've known about this whiskey for five solid years and I've never reviewed it. I'm sorry. All right, so we have um, Tullibardin, the Murray Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, cast strength, non chilled filtered, distilled 2008, bottled 2021. The Marquise, or Marquise uh, collection. This is the 10th edition, 56.1% ABV. So, whiskey base number 197803. So, now. This is a 13-year-old vintage whiskey. I can actually say that the whiskey in this bottle was produced on the 10th of September, 2008. I can say that this whiskey was bottled on the 1st of October in 2021. 13 years of age due to those two age, those, those two statements of um, bottling and distillation. 56.1% non-chilled filtered, no color added, a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. Now, in today's price market of whiskey, we often say 10 years per, 10 euros per year uh, in the bottle, in the barrel. So a 13-year-old whiskey at cast strength could often cost 130 euros. No way, Jose. This is less than half of that. I can get this bottle literally for 50 euros. 55 to 50 euros is the normal everyday price. In the um, Tula Bardeen distillery shop, direct from the distillery, 50 pounds. In whiskey shops over here in Germany, 51 euros. In the Netherlands, 54 euros. In um, Belgium, 60 euros all right and 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 so this is about a 55 euro whiskey which is amazing for the figures given non chill filter no color added cast strength 13 year old original bottling from the distillery and that's mind-boggling all right so what am i going to compare it to I'm going to pull out something I thought was also a little mind-boggling. This is a Glen Caddam single cask. Um, this was a single cask for Germany, for Kirsch. We have here 64.9% ABV. We have, whoops, sorry, we have a first fill bourbon cask. And we have about 90 euros for this. All right, this is the ugliest box I can imagine. It's cardboard um, covered in plastic with plastic inside. Uh, this feels like something from 1983 that my Knight Rider car might have came in. Uh, get better bottles, people. Our bo boxes are no boxes at all for my, in my case. All right, so I have some leftover from my German video. I like this whiskey so much in my video that I did of that months ago. I actually bought a second bottle for me. All right, I'm going to do a bottle share. I'm going to put it in a blind tasting one day. But it's something that I just had to buy because there was 291 of them. 291 bottles. All right, so this is, I'm sorry, 219 bottles. This is Whiskey Base 197780. This is Whiskey Base number 197803. Um, almost half the price of this. Is, it, is this double the flavor? No. Is it a tiny bit better? Yeah, maybe. The single cast characteristic here is so much more unique that I do like it a tad better. But this is something where I go for the value for money. This is going to be a C plus, almost a B minus whiskey. <gasps> Jason gave a B minus for value for money. A Tula Bardeen, the Murray. Remember I said, excuse me for not talking about this earlier. Many people, not many, a few people had pointed my nose in the right direction and I just didn't even think about it. Shame on me. All right, on the nose. Oh, old school. Old school. I like this. Now, this is um, 
<laughs> malted barley. This is barley. This is grain. This is vanilla. We have a tiny little hint of peppermint tea going on here. And we have a little bit of a citrus lime in there. Now, someone else wrote online, it starts with a good amount of vanilla. Good. Then yellow apples. Mm, I don't get the apples, but I don't disagree. A hint of banana candies as well as cotton candy. All right. And a little bit of honey, coconut in the back, and a delicious lemon sponge cake. Someone else wrote down here, plenty of vanilla, sweet pastry, orange pith, and stewed apples. I'm getting more of the stewed apples, actually. Accompanied by a whiff of pine needles, don't get that, and a touch of coconut shavings, and fruitful hops. Uh, somewhat chalky to fairly straightforward, but good. <clears throat> exactly. This is a whiskey where I would not dissect it. This is a whiskey I drink, enjoy, and absolutely tell others about. Good. On the nose, this one's a little bit different. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this one has a little bit more of a pineapple type of moment. It has more barrel char. And we have more of a green tea going on here. This is the peppermint tea. This is the green tea. Which one do I prefer more on the nose? This one. Tad bit, I must admit. Single cask can be wonderful, and this is a wonderful single cask. This is a beautiful, exceptional product for the price. But can it compete with a single cask? Exceptional. An exceptional single cask? No. All right. Cheers. Mm. Mm -hmm. This is something I like. I really, really, really like this. As I said, this is a B minus whiskey, which is fantastic. Yeah, for the price. All right. So um, I do get a little bit more of that. I'm going to use the word yellow apple stolen from someone else. I get more honey moments. I get honey, honey. Um, I still get the mint, that peppermint, that spearmint, more peppermint moment peppermint tea like my grandma used to make with real peppermint leaves in it and so on. Um, malt, vanilla, goodness. All right, so um, one of the statements here is vanilla, that's a creamy vanilla mixed with some of the same banana candies as in the nose, yellow apples too, that hint of candied uh, lemons and maybe even some pink grapefruit. I didn't get it, but when she said it, it's like, well, it's not pink grapefruit, but it's a little bit of a salted, sorry, sugared grapefruit moment, followed by a little bit of mint and caramel toffee, some cinnamon, also a pinch of white pepper. The finish is middle long. And um, the second one would be apple strudel, is what someone said. Didn't get that, but I do get a little bit more of those yellow apples now. With warm vanilla sauce, whiffs of honey, a touch of pickled lemons. I've never had a pickled lemon before. <laughs> and some mashed bananas. Also whispers of walnuts and cinnamon. Sweet and medium in length of the finish with some oak shavings and a sliver of apricots. Mm. I get the dried apricots going on here. I'm going to give this actually a B minus. Um, maybe a B minus minus C plus. No, it's a B minus. Uh, on a good day, it's going to be a B, but it's a B minus here. And a value for money, a C plus to a B minus. I don't know of any cast strength product, 13 years of age from a bourbon cast, that actually has a price tag of 50, 52 euros that I can recommend like this. This is amazing, amazing stuff. All right, for the value for money. We, I'm sorry, I am getting used to paying 10 euros per year. 150, 150 euros for a 15-year-old cast strength. And then something comes around the corner like, where have you been? Why have I ignored you for the last five or six years? Shame on me. Maybe shame on um, Tuli Badin, the Murray for not pushing itself on me and enticing me a little bit more. But that's some good stuff. The single cask over here, 64.9%. Mm. God. 
a little bit more of a dryness, but still a special moment going on here. Oh, barrel char, tiny, tiny little bit. Caramel, a little bit of um, overripe uh, pineapple, apple, wood, dried wood. Mmm, this is so good. Love this. This is my B, maybe a B plus whiskey on a good day. This is my B minus, a bad day, my C plus plus whiskey. Value for money between C plus plus and B minus minus. This, I still think, is a, it's a C whiskey for value for money. I bought another bottle of this. If I had the money, I would go buy another one. Um, if, if, if there were another, there are 219 bottles. I own two of them. Um, if um, there were more bottles, I'd buy another one of these. Let's say that. Money is not the problem. Availability is the issue here. So my question of the day. Now, um, according to my nice little book here that knows more than I will ever know about single malt whiskey, Tulabadin was founded in the year 1949. And the thing that really peeves me, have I said, have I mentioned this yet? No. I'm actually have to take off like half a point because of something. The very first time I was looking at the bottles, I was comparing the two bottles and I was like, oh, look, we have here Glen Caddam Distillers and we have established 1825. Oh, very, very nice. And at the bottom we have something and I looked at this. I look at this wonderful glass here, beautiful bottle. And then I looked, oh, there's a crown. It says 1840, um, 1880, I'm sorry, 1488. I was, I was angry. Why does a distillery founded in 1949 have 1488 on their bottle? That is deceptive marketing. Judy Bardeen, if you're watching this video, stop it. Please don't do that. It just makes real fans I'm going to use the word, it makes me angry that you're trying to deceive me by implying that distillery has been around since 1488. That's a lie. All right. So here we have also the uh, Tuli Bardeen Distillery 1488. That's not an implication. That's a statement. And that's just what, it's a shame. 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 Yes, in the back of the box, you say, you don't even mention 1488 now, do you? No. There is no mention anywhere what that refers to. And that is just a pity. All right, so um, I do want to commend you on being transparent on your whiskey. Non-chilled filtered. Natural color. Cast strength. Thank you. Your pricing. Thank you. But... It bereaves me to see 1488 on that bottle and on that label. Don't believe the marketing idiots out there. We consumers that know a little bit of whiskey are not going to be tricked. And I find it, let me use the word appalling, it's a strong word I know, that you are trying to even trick us at all. It's not needed. You have the good juice. Let the juice talk for itself and don't try to deceive us. All right. So, um, what is your favorite rant or buy? Uh, what is your favorite Tuli And um, talking about years on the bottle that are not true. Bushmills, 1608, not true. Stop the lie, Bushmills. To the body in 1488, stop the lie, it's not true. What other bottles have numbers, ages on them? And don't say number 12, pro proper number 12. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a year, a date in history um, that is not true. Where they try to trick, deceive us consumers to believe that this bottle, that this distillery has a longer heritage. Write the distilleries down in the chat that peeve you as well. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. Sorry about not discovering this bottle sooner. This is a great, the Murray, Tulabadin, buy it.
ink out the 1488, ignore it here, but enjoy the juice. It's good stuff. Thank you for liking, subscribing, telling others, and sharing this video with many, many people in the world, and maybe even someone directly at Tuli Badin that they can see the anger, detest, and disappointment in my face, voice, and in this video. Bye-bye.